OK? So that's a very important concept. Now, why do I say the elite ideas have failed? Well, let's go, let's go through it. The elite ideas of the last generation have failed, and in failing have left America with more poverty, more violence, more red tape, more bureaucrats, more litigation, more power in Washington. And ironically, after all those mores, with less ability to actually get problems solved and less ability to get opportunities developed. Now, those are all measurable. Are there more lawsuits or less? Is there more violence or less? I mean, these are not random observations by somebody who has an axe to grind. Go out and measure them. And you tell me, are more families broken down? Are more one-year-olds likely to suffer child abuse? These are, these are measurable, documentable facts. And yet, I think the system has had a hard time dealing with it. And one of the reasons I really wanted to teach this as a course is that moving from the wrong track to the right track is largely a cultural and an intellectual problem. And I want to take a minute and, and, and explain what I mean. The problem in America today is not money. We have plenty of money. The problem in America today isn't even courage. People will say, oh, politicians are gutless. That's nonsense. You just have the courage to run for office and take the beating you take from the press corps. The person I disagree most in public life, who I will not name, but, but say somebody in the Congress I would disagree with. I respect the fact that they have the courage to run for public office. It's not absence of courage. It's absence of sound ideas. We don't know what to spend the money on. We don't know how to structure the spending. We don't know what rules to set up. And I spent years trying to sort this out. Why, why are we having such a hard time helping people get off poverty? Why are we having a hard, such a hard time establishing safety? Why is it so difficult to get schools where kids are learning? And we came up with, for what was for me, one of the great breakthroughs. I, I was spending part of an afternoon, uh, actually at a hotel near the Atlanta airport, with uh, Dr. Jeff Eisenach uh, of the Progress and Freedom Foundation and Dr. Steve Hanser, who's a historian and a good friend of mine. Eisenach is, a, is an economist, but we still talk to him even though he's not a historian. And we were trying to wrestle with why is it, and this was, this was back during the Bush administration, we were trying to figure out why is it that American governmental bureaucracy doesn't work. I mean, you can make a good argument that outside of elite groups like the FBI and the National Park Service, and outside of the military where failure means you die, so you have a very high incentive to change, that if you take, it, you take those away, that American bureaucracy has an astonishing pattern of decay that is almost universal. You build a big bureaucracy of Americans and it fails. And this is what we came up with. And I want to walk you through a challenge you can take back home and check with people. And in fact, if you would this week, this would just be a fun thing for you to do, and, and uh, uh, just to see what happens when you tell your friends. We're going to talk for a minute about the cultural challenge of speed limits and Americans. This is the heart of the course in terms of the core ideas. Have, have any of you ever been to Germany? You have, you have, you have. About a third of you. In Germany, there is no speed limit on the Autobahn outside of congested areas, right? You get in the Autobahn, you rent a car, you're doing 100 miles an hour, you think you're really something, and a Mercedes goes by at 160. You want to pull over and cry. <laughs> I mean, you know that you don't have the guts to do 160 miles an hour, so you just think, you know, I'm just ruined here. But you know that tomorrow, if the Bundestag adopted 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour as a speed limit, that virtually every German would obey it until the next election. <laughs> they would then massacre the current generation of politicians. And they would elect the no speed limit party. Now, I want you to walk through this with me for a second. This is, is going to sound silly, but it's very, very profound. I want to suggest to you that the American challenge to the cultural concept of speed limits is remarkably different from the German response. For most Americans, a speed limit is a benchmark of opportunity. <laughs> well, I'll just give you the, the test here for a second. Remember, we're not going to learn anything if you lie. Okay? So you've got to be honest here for a second. 
How many of you will routinely look at the speed limit sign? So you can add either 5 or 10. <laughs> Come on, raise your hand now. Be honest, OK? Two thirds of the course, three fourths of the course. Now, what does this tell you? By the way, I have done this everywhere. After we came up with this idea, I began testing it. What I'm teaching you today and what I'm sharing with you in this 10 weeks are ideas that have evolved over a long period of time, in some cases 36 years, where we've actually gone out and talked to them. And I talked to enough different groups. I've really tested this. I once asked this question, and this is enough of you lived on campus. This would not have been as effective, but I'll try it out. How many of you might have gone over the posted number to get to this class this morning? OK, we now know who drives to campus. I did that one time in South Carolina with Carol Campbell, the governor, sitting at the head table. He raised his hand. <laughs> the governor had broken the speed limit to get to the meeting. He said, well, he was on the golf course. It ran long. The place went nuts. Now, why? Because America is not, and this is, this is at the absolute core of the critique of where we are today. America is not, as a civilization, rule dominated. America is incentive dominated. If you want Americans to change, change the incentives. If we said, we'll pay $1,000 to every first grader who can read the day they walk into school, you would be at 95 or 98% literacy within two years. Like that. Instead, because we have this European bureaucratic top-down government mentality in charge, we'll spend $50,000 in a child trying to get an adult in a bureaucracy to coerce them through regulation to do something they're not going to do because there's no incentive for them. They're going, hey, I don't win. Glad you got paid. I didn't get paid. And people, I've had teachers say to me, this is horrible. Now, we're in the middle of a baseball strike. These, these are little kids, right? They watch television. They say to themselves, why is there no baseball? Because guys who are getting $7 million a year are out on strike. OK, I shouldn't get paid anything as a little kid because that would be bad. And I'm not arguing for the payment here. I'm arguing for the concept. I'm not saying, I'm not here today as Speaker of the House saying we ought to have this proposal. I'm trying to get you to think. This is because I, I, I want you to think about this con conceptually. You give America, and think about your own life, you, and think about middle class families. You get straight A's, we'll go to Disney World. You do really well, we'll get a bicycle. I mean, how, how many of you had, at some point in your career, when you were growing up, your parents give you an incentive to do something. Okay, three quarters of the class. Well, the punishment is an incentive. But if you're a very poor child in the neighborhood where nobody cares about learning, getting an F is not a punishment. It's an irrelevancy. Being spanked has an impact. But although, although today you better do it carefully, or you'll be taken into court. Because, but I'm just trying to suggest to you here, very core distinction which doesn't start with government, it starts with civilization. If you're a civilization where rules matter and people obey the rules, having a government designed around rules works. If you're a civilization of freedom, where incentives work, you'd better have a system designed around incentives. And so we have a totally misdesigned European-style effort to impose into America a government designed to change people and designed antithetically to the American civilization. 